All right, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this fifth class of this Java tutorial. Um, let's see, today we'll be focusing on strings again. So we'll be doing some more uh, fun string functions in Java. Uh, so let me get the slides up. So I guess, so in the meantime, does anyone have any questions or comments about things we've gone over so far uh, or about the class or things, something that they want to say? All right. Okay. Well, so before we get into the nitty gritty, let's do a small little review of the things that we, some of the other things that we went over yesterday. Let's see, a refresher. What is the difference between a double equal sign and a dot equals method for strings? Um, can, can anyone tell me if they remember what the differences between these two are? Double equals and dot equals. Is it uh, dot equals more sophisticated than equals equals? That is one way to look at it. Uh, that's a good um, that, that's a good answer, Aaron. So I suppose more specifically, um, double equals looks at memory, like where the variable, where the two variables are in memory, um, and dot equals looks at the content of the strings. So, so they're not always equal. Uh, these two differences. So, so that's the main difference. One is memory based, and one is content based. And then we have some more string methods here. What are the differences between the following compare to compare to ignore case and content equals? Uh, I, I I reckon you guys can give a pretty good guess just based on the names of these methods. But um, what compare to does it just it compares two strings together if they're the same it outputs and now it puts a zero or one depending on if they're the same or not. Um, compare to ignore case works the same exact way except that it ignores the case and content equals works the same way as compared to does but it looks at the content rather than um, its location and in, in memory so those are the differences between those all right all right now let's get started with the material oh the homework uh so i'm going to be honest um i haven't been able to com to completely finish my solution to the homework four to homework four yet. Um, so I won't be able to go through it. So go over it now, but I will post the homework four solution sometime this week. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that people have. I know that some people have had some questions already. So I'll go through all of um, all the questions that you guys have one by one in the in the Google Cold Classroom to make sure that we all understand what's going on. All right. Okay. All right, though, time for the material. Substrings. Now, the substring method is this thing right here, public string, substring. It takes, um, it takes, its parameters are a beginning index and an end index. And this is how some of it works. You have a string X that's hello wall, you're now in the hall. And then substring prints out different parts of the string. So. Let's try this whole thing out. Now let's see how many times I mess up this example and then somebody catches my mistake. I think I need to import something. Do I need to import something? No, that's not it. Let's look at class four. Uh, oh no, okay, I don't need to import anything good. All right. Okay, let's 
let's run this code and see what we get. So we've declared a string X, a string Y, that's a, that's a substring of X at index where the beginning index is five and a string Y where we've taken the substring of indices six. So somewhere around here to 10. Let's print out everything here. And let's see what we get. Oh, wow, uh, interesting. Okay. So from the output that we see down here, X just is the string that we put in. Y just prints out all and then and then uh, and then uh, and then a comma. And then Z prints out uh it looks like all common that we are in the hall. Okay, so explaining why might seem kind of confusing because like, if you just see five here, you would think that it would just print out, uh, see one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four, five. You think that maybe it just print out like an empty space here or maybe just A, but it prints out all because looking at the, looking at the method here, the first argument that it takes is a beginning index and the second that it takes is an end index. So if you just leave out the end index, if it looks, seems like it just goes to the, um, or rather, well, that's actually kind of confusing. But what it looks like is that it prints out from zero to five for Y, and then for Z, it prints out from, prints out an empty space first and then the rest of them. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to try to find some documentation for this function to see if I can make some sense of this. Right. So it seems like when you just put in one number for substring, it works differently than when you put in two numbers. So when you just put in a five here, it's uh, it looks like five is where you want it to end. Actually, is it? No, no, no. That that, that can't be it. Uh, that's kind of confusing. I'm gonna play around with this for a bit. Okay. All right. Okay. I see what the issue is now. I, I, I confused myself. So I'll, I'm, I'm, maybe somebody caught the mistake I made, but the variables here are ordered X, Z, Y, but I was printing it down here as, as X, Y, Z. So I thought that Y was Z and Z was Y. So we have another, <clears throat> another Kingsley oopsie. Uh, I fixed my mistake now and just, un, just unpaused. So so now run, running this again, you'll see that it, that it outputs correctly now, right? So why actually this, this variable right here is, it prints out from, it looks like, need to change this to, Okay, right now it's correct. So let's see. This Z here, this Z is equal to X dot substring five. 
it, it starts from substring five and prints out everything after that. So we go from zero, one, two, three, four, uh, five. And does then, it include? Yep. Or number Z, does it include the space? Yep. So there is an empty space here. This empty, oh. and you can, can even like verify by looking at Y down here, but there's an empty space between um, for the first character of Z. And that's that's why it looks kind of weird compared to Y. But yeah, Z is an empty space followed by all your all in the hall. That's because we put in a five here. And when we and when we put in a beginning and end index for substring, it just starts from uh let's see, six and then goes to so which is A and then so it's seven, eight, nine, ten. So it looks like 10 is inclusive, the end index is inclusive. Uh, so yeah, this is one of those, substrings is one of those um, methods that you have to play around for a bit to really get a good grasp of because it's, it can get kind of confusing this, at, times, at times as I have just shown. Um, but yep, that is how it works. All right, let's see if there's any other substring examples here. All right. Okay, so this is uh, this is some more string functions. Looks like we're doing replace and splits. Oh, yeah, a question. Ten is a space. Yep, yep. Ten is an empty space. So that's why there is a. Seems like there's a space down here in Y. Maybe I don't know. Maybe there's a space there. Yeah. Good catch. Um, to the person that typed that in the chat. All right, now let's comment this out. All right, so what we're doing here is that we're declaring a string X, same as the beginning, hello all, we're now in the hall. And then string Z here is that we take X and replace all the occurrences of LL with AA. And then Y is an example of an array. I won't talk about what arrays are yet. That's for a later class, but we'll talk about what the function outputs. So let me uh, print out X, actually print out X, Y, and Z. And change 11 to see. All right, yeah, let's quickly change um, 6 to 10, 6, 10 to 6, 11. Let's see what, what that does. So give another example of what substring does. All right, so we're talking about this substring right here. Actually, let me print this out as is so that we can have something as reference. Oh, whoops, I think I look at a semicolon. Right, so this is what we have with substrings as of right now, um, especially with Y right here. Let's see what happens if we change that 10 to 111. And it's still the same because um, because it's just an empty space right here. Let's try to change the 11 to a 12. And it prints out the W, yeah. Yep, so character index 11 is just this empty space right here. Yep, that's one of those that we can play around with substrings. Two spaces, are there two spaces here? It doesn't seem like it. Let's try printing out these functions and see what we get. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. All right, can we all see what's going on with the Z over here? Can someone try to explain it in the chat or with their mic why X is X and Z is Z? I think Z is Z because I. Uh, 
you wrote that uh, replace all the L's with AA, the LLs with AA. Yep. Yep, that's exactly what happened. So we could see from the LL in hello and in all was replaced with A's. And it also happens in um in hall. Let's see. Yep, you're right. You were correct as well, Angela. So nice, Aaron and Angela. And um, let's see. So what split does is that it's. Let's. I wonder if I can make this print out prettier. All right. Oh, wow, that's weird. Okay, I see what it did now. Okay. Um, so I'll just print out both of these. Okay, so Vincent is asking, what does the system dot out, out dot front line stuff at the end, what all that means? So what system dot out dot front line does is that um, it, it, lets, it lets you pretty much just print out stuff down here in, in your console. All right, so it makes it so that whatever you, you type in in between the parentheses here, it shows up down here. So like, for example, in this first one, I use system that I'll, I'll print line to print out x colon followed by a space followed by the variable x up here. And that's what shows up in this first line here. So that is system that I'll, I'll print line. It's just, it's just it's a it, it, it's a Java method. It's a Java, it's a method in Java. All right. Um, and what split does is that it looks for any occurrence of a comma in this in the string that you're putting in it into it. And then it splits that, and then it splits the string from like everything before the comma, which is why we're is what we're putting in and everything and everything after it. And it puts it into a thing called an, an array, which we'll talk about later. And um, yeah, it just does what the, the name implies and splits a string based on what you um what you put into it. And you can play around with this function too as well uh, once I post this code on, on Google, on the Google Classroom. So if we like replace this with we, then it looks for where we is in the string and then splits it based on that. Could you explain uh, what split means again? I was in the bathroom. Yeah, so what split does pretty much is that it takes like the argument that you're putting into it and then it looks at the string that you wanna split and then it just defies the string based on like the argument that you put in. So for example, we just put we in, and then the Java looks into in the string X and looks for an occurrence of we and it found it here. And then it split the string from, from that point. So the first part of the string is hello all, and then the rest of it is R now in the mall. And originally this was a comma, and then I'll put it something different. It split it from where the comma was. So that is what split does. All right. Uh, does anyone? I'll check x value again. Interesting. Let's see what x is after we do the split. Let me see the same. Okay. Anyway, uh, does anyone have any questions about any about the things that we've seen so far with substring and the place and uh, split? What will Y2 be? Um, well, it's gonna be empty because yeah, it's gonna give an error most likely, but or, or whatever. Um, Java initializes it as, and it's most likely you want to say that that nothing that that y two doesn't exist. But let's uh, see what this prints out. Min minuan. 
Yeah, yeah, I gave an error. Gave an out of bounds error because the length of the array is just, the length of it is just two, but we're trying to find the third index. But th this is talk about arrays and, and we haven't gone over arrays yet. So I don't expect you guys to really understand what that, what, what, what all that ever means. Um, but just for now, you can think of arrays as like a list, just, just a list of things. All right, so putting in two just gives a, and just, just gives an error. Yep, you, you would need to, well, um, yeah, Java makes it a lot easier to handle compared to C. C would just let you make a mistake like that and crash the program, but Java has safeguards. All right, now let's have a little quiz. Uh, we have a string X, hello all, we know in the hall. Write Java code to replace all the spaces in this string and then print out a new string without space. So, so you would use to, to do this quiz and let you do this, let you guys do this to on your own and you're playing around with, with these functions. You would use replace and then you would just have an empty space kind of like that. And you would re replace it with something like just an empty this is an empty string like that. So that's how it would work if you want to do that, if you want to do the quiz. Um, but I'll let you guys do that on your own time. And I might even get bonus points if you post your solutions to these quizzes in the Google Classroom or something, or, or, DM, or DM them to me or, or however you want to do it. All right, string concatenation. Let's try to... Run this code and see what happens. All right, string X is hello wall, string Y is how are you today, string Z is we're adding string X and string Y and today together. All right, let's see what's uh, let's see what string Z prints out. All right, so uh, what concatenation does is that it just um, springs two things together. And in Java, you can do concatenation with just a plus sign for strings at least. Um, so you have, what am I doing? So you you have, need to, uh, yep. Uh, in, in string Z, you need to put a, a space before today to add the space in the uh, below, right? Yep, that is exactly correct. So if we were to okay. remove that space in today, the string is, is going to come out looking kind of weird. It just, there's no space between you and today. That's why we have that space there. And you guys may have noticed that I used string concatenation, but didn't really say anything. I used it in this, uh, in some of these print lines here where I take an X, where, where I take this, Hard coded string right here, and then do a plus, and then do an X. Um, yeah, I didn't even realize that I was doing it to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, that is string concatenation is very handy, as I've shown in these print line statements. Um, and you can also use the similar concat method. This is works exactly the, the same way as um, as plus does. So if you were to, maybe I'll just comment this out and do that. We'll also need that actually. What am I doing? Okay, there we go. Oh, wait, no. This is going to print line, actually. So you can also use the concat function, kind of like that. It's just a different way of using the plus. And it works, it works exactly the same way, except it's a little less sophisticated because it doesn't add the spaces like we could here, kind of. Anyway, um, 
Yep, that's concat. Let me know if I'm going a little too fast. Um, I don't want you guys to miss, to miss anything again and get confused. Oh, just need to pick up the pace a little bit. All right. Um, more shrink concatenation. Let's run these and see what we get. This, this says he can concatenate other kinds of objects with strings and they would automatically be converted into a string. So I'll give a demonstration of that here. String T is equal to hello, string J is equal to a string called 200. And we have an int I that's equal to 100. And we're concatting T and I together in string S. And we're also declaring a, oh, this, this, this doesn't like that. Yeah, this, this, this wouldn't work as I thought. I wonder if the slide mentions that. Hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna comment this off. I'm gonna actually we'll just remove this for now. So let's try printing string S and see what we get. And it prints out hello 100, even though I that we're concatenating to T's and as an int, it converts into a string. So that's an example of typecasting, as we'll see in a slide soon. Yep. So whenever when we when working with strings and other types, you can run typecast, you can run into typecasting issues. Um int my int i is equal to int my int is equal to the i plus integer value of j and parse i. So there's a difference between these two value of j and parse int of j. Um and it kind of just highlights what typecasting issues are. So I'll quickly put this into Eclipse and see what we get. Oh, that one doesn't like either of that. Oh, I need to uncomment this. All right, let me see what my int and my int2 are. Yeah, all right. So it gives two different answers here because there's some subtleties between value of j and parse into j. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not too sure what these two methods do off the top of my head. Um, I have to look at the documentation to do that. So that could be an extra thing that you guys can do if you're interested in that. Um, I, maybe I'll look into it after class and post it and post what I find. But for now, let us move on. All right, um, so uh, these string methods are some of the, of the things that, that'll be on the AP computer science exam if you guys go do that in, in, uh, in high school. So um, some things to keep in mind. Well, actually those, these methods that follow will be on the AP computer science exam. Things like um, int length that returns the number of characters in the string, including spaces and special characters and stuff. Another important string method is substring. The thing that we went over from that that we that we went over earlier. Um, let's see what else. Index of I think we worked with index of last class. Compare to, uh, see this 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 method is from the review earlier. So I really suggest you guys give these descriptions a read. Um, once the recording of this is out, because these 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 the descriptions are pretty useful, I'd say. Uh, Boolean equals, another interesting one. All right, quiz. All right. 
what is the value of POS after the following code executes, string SI is equal to A, B, C, D, whatever that is, and in position is equal to SI.index. Um, so I will leave this on the screen for a bit and let you guys think about it. And then we can talk about what the answer ought to be. So this uses the index up from last class. Okay, looks like we're getting some answers. Um, can somebody explain why they got the answer that they got? anyone that wants to explain with the mic why they got the answer that they got. I think a uh, B is the correct answer because it says find the index of B. Uh, last, I remember last week when we tried, it, it just took the first index of B uh, and A is zero, so that means B has to be one. Good, very good, Aaron. That's some good memory. Uh, so that's exactly correct. Your correct answer is B, and it looks like most of you guys got that. Um, so running this in my Eclipse, we can print out the position. And it is indeed one for B. Yeah. Nice job, guys. Right here is another. Wait, could you explain it again? Yeah. So what, what index of does is that it, um, it so it, you're supposed to, um, to, to give it a, a character or some kind of substring even. In this case, we're given it B. And then it goes to S1 and looks for the first occurrence of B, which is right here, um, which is right here. And the index of this first B is one because A is zero, indexing starts at zero and B is one. So that's why the answer is B. Um, does, does that help? All right, another quiz. What is the value of len after the following executes? Um, string one is miss you. And then remember that, that the length function just returns the length of the string that you're giving it. So in this case, S1. Remember that the length of a string is the last index plus one. That's one way to think about it. So I'll give you guys a minute to think about what the answer of this ought to be. Okay, um, can somebody explain to me why they got the answer that they got? All right. Oh, um, okay, so the answer to this is actually C. Um, so by counting this, we're counting from M, which is, so, so going off the, the length of a string is the index, is the last index value plus one. M is zero, and then we go Z zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So the last index value was eight, and then we add one, which is nine. So the, the length of the string is nine. Um, well, I forgot to pause, forgot to unpause my screen. So starting from M, which is zero, um, we do zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The exclamation point is eight, and then we add one, which is which makes it nine. Another way to think about this is that the um, is that you have to count like even starting from one, you, you can kind of get the same answer by just counting the length of the string even. So re remember that length also counts exclamation points as sp and spaces and stuff. That's one tricky thing to keep in mind. So running this code, uh, I have it down here. If we were to run this, we also see that Java thinks that it's nine. So this one tripped you guys up a little bit. I'm guessing it was the, the empty space or the exclamation point that, that got most of you. So kudos to the, some of the people that uh, were able to catch that. Looks like Sophia, Sophia did. Uh, looks like Angela did. Minwan. Wait, can you say why it adds one again? Yep. So, so one way to think about the length of a string is that it's the value of the last index, which in this case is the exclamation point, which is eight. And then you add one to that. So that's the length of the string. Remember that the, the first index is zero. So um, the length of the string is like the amount of characters that's in it from first to last. So when we think about length, we could really think about M as being one, and then you count from there. But it's always going to be equal to also the last index value plus one, because the first index is zero. Um, so Aditya is asking, is there a limitation of the length in Java, of the length of a string in Java, or can the number go on indefinitely? Uh, so I, I suppose that the limitation of the length of a string in Java will be the amount of memory that's in your computer. So I guess you can have a string that's like thousands of characters long, tens of thousands of characters long. It's, it just depends on the, on the computer that you have and how much memory that it could hold. Um, I mean, I myself have worked with some pretty long strings in the past just to parse through them, parse through, to parse through data and stuff. Anyway, let's do another quiz. What is the value of S2 after the following code executes? So this one works with substrings. All right, so string one is baby and string two is, uh, we're taking a substring from zero to three of baby. And we want to see what it outputs. So. I'll give you guys a second to think about this. All right, seems like this one's another tricky one. Uh, the answer to this is actually is actually D. Um, so the reason why this is D is that, remember that substring takes the beginning index of zero, which is B, and then it goes to three, um, three inclusive. So we see we start at zero, which is B, and then A is one, and then B, oh wait, no. So, so the, the last index is not inclusive, it turns out. The first index is inclusive, which, which is why we started at B, which is equal to zero. But but the last three, the last parameter, of the last argument rather, is not inclusive. So you might think that since it's three, it'll, you'll it'll go okay. So index will, will go from zero, one, two, and then to index three, which is Y. But that's actually not the case because the last one is not inclusive. So I'll just print out B, A, B. Um, and we can verify this by looking at Java. I put, I put the I put the substring thing up here. If you were to run this, 
it was printed out BAB. But if we were to say change this to two, you might think that, okay, it'll, it'll, it'll print out from index zero to index two, which is this B right here, which is this B right here. But it's, it's actually only, only going to do BA because oh, I forgot to unpause again. Okay. Okay, so I've unpaused and I put the code up here. Um, so originally, We have this, when we do zero to three, it prints out BAB. Um, but if you were to change this B to two, you might think that it would print out from indices zero to two, which is BAB, but it won't. It's going, only going to do B and A because the way that substring works is that it does the beginning, which is inclusive, so zero. But the last argument, which is two, the last argument is not inclusive. So it doesn't include two. It just goes from zero to one. That's why it just prints out BA. So the main takeaway from this quiz is that um, for substring, for the substring method, the last argument is not inclusive. The last index is not inclusive. So it doesn't go all the way to there, but it goes to the one right before it. Why does it do that? that that's a good question. Um, that might solve some confusion that people have, but I mean, you might have to take it up with the creator the, with the creator of Java, I guess. But let's see if there are any questions. Okay. All right, another quiz. What is the value of S2 after the following code executes? I'll let you guys think about this for a second. So remember, since we're only with one index, it this works kind of differently. So what this, I'm guessing that what I'll do is, I'm thinking that it will be, oh, wow. I'm thinking that it will be A. So let's try to run this and see what we get. Put the code up here. Oh, so it just prints out BY. Okay, and what's, what's BY? BY is A, okay. So, so for the people that said A, you were correct. Um, so kudos to Henry, Sophia, Minwan. Uh, Jerry, I'll give you half a point. <laughs> um, I am the worst driver. Someone else should be it. You are also correct. <laughs> YA. Uh, so YA because the way that substring works is that it um, goes to the index that you're starting with. So zero, one, two. And, um, and then it prints out everything after that since we didn't put an end index. That's why it's just by. He's a hope that cheeky uh, username isn't. I hope I'm not the driver in that because I think I'm a pretty good driver, <laughs> at least in real life. I don't know if I'm a good Java driver. Anyway, that's the quiz. Let's see, oh wow, we have a lot of quizzes here. So before I move on, does anyone have any questions about what, about what we've seen so far? All right, let's move on. 
So in this quiz, we are asking what is the value of S2 after the following code executes? String S size equal to new string, taking the index of E and then the substring. Uh, well, this one's a little tricky. So I'll give you guys another minute to think about this. Right, the correct answer here is is A, right? High space TH. Now, why is it A? Let's see if we can figure it out. So we're taking the index of, oh, you know. Okay, so the value of POS is the index of E, of the first E that we see, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, so POS should be five. And um, substring goes from zero to five, so it should be H, uh, H, which is zero, and then I, which is one, two, three, four, five. And since substring is not inclusive, we just start, we just stop with high space TH. Yep, it is A. So when you listen in Java, we get, um, we get the same answer, high space TH. All right, last quiz. What is the value of SI after the following code executes? So we'll take a look at this and see what you can think of. All right, the correct answer should be D because we're taking the substring from zero to one. Remember the one is not inclusive, so it's just gonna be H. And then S2, and then in string three, we are taking S2 and taking it, changing it to lowercase. So that should just give us a D, lowercase D. So if we were to, oh, I didn't print out S2 yet. So if we were to run this, let's see what we get. We guess so you just get a lowercase h, which is what we expected. So yay for the people that got D. All right. S1 didn't get changed. Um yeah, we're just taking the substring from S1. All right. So that's strings. Uh, does anyone have any questions before we move on to string buffers? No. All right. Oh. Well. Um, why did S1 not get changed? Um, I'm not too sure what you mean, Minwan. Uh, so Last, can I talk? Yeah, yeah. Question is, what's the value of S1, right? <clears throat> yes, let's go see. back to question. Um, so we could just try printing out S1 and see what we got, but it's just let's gonna go back to a... question. Oh, uh, yeah, going up here. 
Oh, what is the value of S1 after the question? You yeah, say, I, what's I the value? A, I, think, I think this might be a typo. I think it should be what is the value of S3 after the following code ex executes. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was following the question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, so S1 is just going to be high because we're not changing it at all. So it's S3 that we're looking for. So I think there's just a little typo here. Yeah. Sure. Yep. All right. Okay, string builder. So after we learn string, we understand that there is a limitation on this class. To help handle strings, we have a new class, string buffer. String represents fixed length immutable character sequences, while string buffer represents growable and writable character sequences. So the main thing to get from this slide is that the string buffer object or class is just a more powerful a more powerful version of strings. And we can do more with string buffers in an even, in an even easier way than we can do with strings. So string buffer allows for insertion of substrings in the middle or appended to the end of a string. Well, it would automatically grow to make room for such additions and often has more characters free allocated than are actually needed to allow room for growth. So one of the ways that string buffer is a convenient tool to use in Python compared to regular strings. Um, so this is how you declare a string buffer, kind of like how you declare a new data type. Um, you just say string buffer is equal to new buffer. So let's try running this and see what we get. So this is going to print out an empty, an empty. It's not going to print out anything because we're not, we're not making this. Uh, I forgot the semicolon. This is not going to print out anything. I just want to show that that Java is okay with this kind of construction here. Um, so these are some different ways of using string buffer. We can like put a put in a value into the constructor here to pre-allocate space, whoops, into the string buffer. It will still not print out anything though, because we're not making this anything. Um, Can you explain that again? Yep. Um, so what string buffer is just um, a more powerful version of the default string data type that Java has. It, and, I explained some of the things that they can't that string buffers can do that regular strings can't do up here. I mean that's even the 20. Yeah, so so what 20 does the the 20 is the amount of space that we want to set for the buffer. So it's it's the size of the string essentially that we're going to eventually put into the string buffer. See, so we're like setting aside 20. 20 character spaces in this variable as we could think is one way that we could think about it. So is it like that sets how big you can make the string buffer? Yep, at least initially. And you could always even um, make it bigger whenever you want. Um, there should be a method down here that shows that example, um, at least I hope. So that's what the 20 means here. It just, it's just pre-allocated space. Um, so these are, so string buffers also have a length um, method that returns the length of a string. Um, and also has a capacity that returns the total allocated capacity. So it's possible for these two things for length and capacity to be different. So let's say that we took S and put like a string of size four in it. Well, length will be four, but the capacity will still be 20. Um, so let's run this code and see what stuff we get. All right, so we're declaring a string S, that's AOE Java class and p is equal to the length of s and q was the capacity I oh actually i forgot to i think i should probably uncomment 
Oh, no, no, I don't need to uncomment that. Um, all right. So let's see. Since we did not explicitly put a capac capacity here, it looks like string buffer just put in one that was enough. So in this case, 30. So the length of the string is just a Lee Java class, but the capacity is 30 because that's what string buffer decided that it should be by default. Oh, that's kind of interesting, actually, I wonder. Uh, so if you don't put in, so this is what we did here, this method right here. So if you don't put in a capacity explicitly like we do here, it accepts a string argument that sets the initial contents of the string buffer objects and resumes and reserves room for 16 more characters without reallocation. So it just took the 14th here and added 16, which is why we get 30. That's what it did. Okay, quiz. Spend five minutes on the string buffer um, class website on Java tutorial points and then answer these questions. I'll leave that uh, I'll leave that for you guys later on. I'll, I'll post, I'll make sure to post this in the on the Google Classroom. All right, here's another quiz. You take have you have a string buffer as equal to a Lee Java class maybe you had before. And you want to, the quiz is to write, this, is not, this isn't homework, this isn't, uh, I don't expect you, uh, you guys don't really have to do this, you might, you might get bonus points or something if you really want to do it, but it'll help, you under, it'll help your understanding too. So this quiz is to write Java code to reverse the string buffer and then convert it to a string and then print it out. So the methods for this, for this is, is all in the Java tutorial point link here that I will post eventually. All right, so that was string buffer. Now, another a class that's similar to, to string buffer is string builder. Um, it's much like string buffer in that it is mutable, meaning that you can change the string and that it can grow. Um, the difference between string builder and string buffer is that string builder does not guarantee synchronization. Therefore, it is not thread safe, um, but it is faster. Now, what does not thread safe mean? Um, I don't expect you guys to know that because that's more threaded programming. Um, but just think of it as string builder being a little, a little, being a little bit more risky in return for speed when you're working with threading. That's essentially what it means. All right. We did not go too deeply into synchronization and multi-threading in this level one class, but for now, just remember that whenever you use string builder, you can also use string buffer. Um, these are some of the constructors for string builder, a lot like string buffer, very similar. All right, any questions on all that so far before I get into the homework? All right. So let's see, your homework problem is you have um, the sentence, please compare Tom and Mary in the classroom. Um, use the substring method to get the names Tom and Mary out of these strings and assign them to variable names, assign them to variables name one and name two. Um, and make sure not to hard code it because that's not in the spirit of the assignment. Um, so yep, so that's what you have to do. Get the names of Tom and Mary out of the strings and assign them to variable names one and two without hard coding. Just use substrings. And the second part of the homework is find the length of both names and print out the bigger length value. Then print out whichever name comes first in the alphabet. Um, and these always work no matter what you make name one and two. So this, I admit this, this, this assignment is a little trickier. Um, I'll make sure to post the assignment instructions tonight so that you guys have time to think about this. The max value of length. Oh, okay, so you, you found something, all right. So thanks for sharing that, Minwan. Um, so that's the homework. It is about 7.30 now. Uh, I hope this class was uh, was was better. I hope I'm no longer the worst driver ever. Um, 
So yeah, thank you guys for participating in this class. I apologize for being, for having a little runny nose that went on a run earlier. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns about what we've gone, well, about what we've gone over so far, about what we've gone over in this class, rather? All right. Well, um, thank you guys for participating. Hope you have a good day.